a massive landing gear strut. Looks like the wheel has decayed away. But if we... I'm in the jungle in Malaysia, just south of Kuala Lumpur, and I'm looking for a World War II plane crash. The trail's completely trashed. We've had a particularly rainy, rainy season this year, so there's landslides. Fallen trees. It's just slow, slow going. It's still quite wet, so there's also lots, lots of leeches. You feel a little tingle on your leg, and then you look down and your ankles are covered. So if you're a bit squeamish, you might want to look away now. You can pretty obviously see these two here. There's a big one here. So in case you uh, in case you missed my tally there. And you can look back again. Whole areas of the river have just been scoured clean by what must be a massive flood. Everything is just blocked. Been going uphill for about two hours now and I've done about 5k, three miles. So hopefully that tells you more about the terrain than it does about my fitness. This is a pretty steep section. I have to use a rope to get up. Came up to these two fallen trees and nearly put my hand on here to get over. And uh, luckily I didn't. feel some leeches inside my sock squishing around and I didn't think it was that bad until I looked down and I can see blood is actually leaking out through my sock and through my shoe. I've just come across a single track in the jungle and it's it's freaked me out a little bit. Um, I'll see if you can see it on the camera. I'm not sure how well you can see this. One here, 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 here and here. So there's five kind of toes I guess. Um, there are tigers in Malaysia, but they're pretty rare. These are going to be, be my last words, aren't they? Um, I'm going to tell myself that it's a, a wild boar, because <laughs> I saw some disturbed ground a little while ago, an hour ago or something, which I guess would indicate pigs rooting in the ground. Um, but it doesn't really look like a boar, it's pretty big. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit more freaked out now. I just saw another one of these back there and I, I didn't know what it was. It's definitely some kind of track. Um, claw here, 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 here. So it's, it's pretty big. Yeah. I have no idea what that is. And um, I'm a little bit freaked out to be honest. I'm now on the top of Gunung Beremban, Mount Beremban, 
and this is the mountain that the Royal Air Force B-24 Liberator bomber crashed into over 75 years ago. The really tragic thing about this story is that the plane actually crashed when the war had finished. It was eight days after the official end of the war. It had taken off from a base in the Indian Ocean and it was dropping food and medical supplies to prisoners of war in this area and it's thought that it clipped a tree and then crashed into the thick jungle around here. This plaque shows the actual location to the turn off down to the crash site. And it wasn't actually discovered right away. It was found in the mid 1950s by the local Orang Asli tribe. That's the indigenous people who live in this area. And they told the government and the military at the time that they were a bit preoccupied fighting the communists in the Malayan emergency. So they didn't really do anything at the time. And it kind of got forgotten for over 60 years. There's been a massive landslide down here, which has partially blocked the path. It's a very steep trail down to the crash site. It's amazing that the Orang Asli even found it because it's such thick jungle and you just don't see it until you're right upon it. So just coming down into the main crash site now, there's actually two different areas. So I believe this is one of the tailplanes, one of the tailplane fins. And then I believe this is the section of the main wing with the remains of an engine here. If you look at the size of this engine, it's absolutely huge. And it's, it's really quite a weird thing to be here, just surrounded by jungle with this wreckage. In here, that's one of the wheels. You can see it's massive. It's bigger even than a large truck wheel. This thing has been buried almost by the, the landslide, but it looks to be some kind of ball turret maybe. There's another part of the crash site over here. The jungle's quite overgrown here, so it's sort of hard to get to this section. I'm just gonna try and bash through this jungle and get a little bit closer. I actually took my machete out of my bag, which was um, a bit of a mistake. So here I am in the second part of the plane crash. As you can see, more landslides, so the site's just slowly getting reclaimed by nature. A massive landing gear strut looks like the wheel has decayed away but if we look at this there's a metaphor for you this is the um the main undercarriage i guess you can see one of the wings being bent back and it's been crushed by this giant tree You can actually see some of the old paint on here, the RAF colours. You can maybe see a little bit better from this side. Here's the main fuselage coming along. This is the main wing that's actually bent backwards and then folded back on itself again. So it really has hit with some amazing force and it's, it's really pretty sobering really. These two sites are spread quite far apart and I actually even saw some stuff right at the top of the hill as I was walking down. So the amount of force that's been released in this crash, because it is a giant air aircraft, it really is um, something to think about. It's a, it's a strange place. To go back to the main story, in 2006, over 60 years after the crash, a group mounted a proper expedition to come and find the remains of the aircraft. And when they did find it, um, no doubt with the help of the Orang Asli, they did a really extensive search and they found a load of personal effects, including things like wedding rings, dog tags, even spectacles. 
They even found some human remains, some bones, and they took those off and DNA tested them just to double confirm that this was the crew and the right aircraft, and of, of course it was. The remains of the crew were then recovered. They were taken to Kuala Lumpur and they were buried in a military ceremony. When you look at the crew list, one thing that really struck me was just how young they all were. I think the oldest one was 30, but most of the others, there was eight of them, were either 20 or 21. I think a couple were 22, and maybe one was 24 or 25. One of them was also actually from Dewsbury, which is about 20 miles from where I grew up. When I came down here and saw this site, saw the two areas and how violent the crash must have been, um, it really made me think twice about whether I should make a video about this but I do think it's important to kind of try and document it, especially with these landslides coming down and all the trees. This probably won't be here in another few years. So I think, firstly, it's quite an interesting story, so it's good to be shared with people, but I think the main thing is just to kind of remember those eight men who were so young, who gave up their lives trying to help other people.